I have. Uh, if so, uh, who did you go to for help? I think, unfortunately, I don't think I really talked to anybody about it, which was bad. I wish I would have. Okay, so we'll skip, skip that. Part. Like, my friendly school counselor would have been a good person for me to talk to. Right, guys? Yeah. 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 Uh, I haven't yeah, ever been uh, affected by bullying. Um, bullying per se, you know, there's a, I was picked on a lot um, for a couple of reasons when I was a kid. One was I had a lot of acne when I was your age, seventh grade, all the way up probably through most of high school. Um, I was really tall, really skinny, so uh, kids picked on me for that. But I don't know if I was really bullied, you know, because there's a difference between picked on and being bullied. You know, it wasn't really continuous where I would call it being bullied. Uh, I do regret, however, though, there was a couple times where I picked on a kid and uh, bullied one in particular that I really regret that uh, looking back now, you know, I'm, I wish I would have never done that. That was foolish. Okay. And usually when I talk to them, I feel like they feel bad and then they kind of do better. And if they don't do better, then maybe I have to talk to them again. But I really just kind of like to talk to kids about it and, you know, maybe why did you do it? Think about how it made the other pe person feel, you know. So I am I hope that that works, and if it doesn't, then obviously then they How do you think we could stop bullying? Well, I think sometimes maybe you guys see things, you know, and I think just speaking up when you do see people being bullied. I think treating the people around you with respect, because if they see people doing it, then hopefully everybody's going to be like, this is how we treat people. So you're kind of creating a culture of kindness rather than a culture of being mean to each other. So I think speaking up and I think just being nice to the people around you and hopefully then everybody else will do that. Uh What did it do for help? Uh, mostly me with my dad. Um, me and my dad are pretty close, so um, that was probably my go-to person growing up. I have an older brother, too, that I could talk to a little bit. So I always had a person to go to, which was nice. I know some kids feel that they don't, and that's, that's really too bad. I hope they realize that there's always someone you can talk to, but um, that was mine, my dad and my brother, you know? So, I mean, a lot of students that I talked to, I mean, you know, how many specifically, boy, I couldn't, I couldn't tell you. Uh, when you would talk to them, would it be the same kid or multiple, like a lot, or mostly the same kid would come to you? Uh, sometimes you get, you know, you always tell, you know, I have uh, quite a few students here right now that I have check in with me, you know. So I guess you'd say that's the same kid. Um, I just tell them once a week at least you're going to come see me, we're going to talk. You know, it might be for two minutes, it might be for 20, but... You know, I want those constant check-ins just to see how they're doing. They might stop in and say, hey, Mr. Terrell, I'm doing great, you know, and on the way. Or they might have to sit down and talk about some stuff. You know? So sometimes it's just once, and sometimes it's, uh, you know, you get those frequent kids that you want to check in on. Uh, and uh, this might sound weird, but what have you done to someone who has been bullied or was the bully? What have I done to them? Yeah, like maybe help them. Or <laughs> yeah. Something. Well, if the kid was getting bullied, obviously I would try to do everything I can to get them the help that they need, right? Um, and if the kid is being the bully, then we need to have a different conversation. You know, I'm going to talk to them about why they're doing that, first of all, the damage that they could cause by doing that. Um, and I'm going to try to put some parameters in place where it doesn't happen again. You know, sometimes it's spending some time with me. Sometimes it's call home. Sometimes it's both. Sometimes it's a meeting with parents and, you know, another family if we have to, but I try to do whatever I can to make sure that uh, both parties, you know, the bully and the one that's getting bullied understands that this doesn't continue. Okay, and uh, how do you think this affects the kids who are being bullied? How does it affect them? Why would you go to that person? Why would I go to my dad? Yeah, or your or my brother. Your brother. Well, it's just a trust thing, right? You want to be able to trust the person you're talking to, someone that understands what you're coming, you know, going through or uh, what happened, so I could always trust those two. 
And there's three teachers I could trust too. I remember, a, I mean, my one of the best teachers I ever had was Dave McSherry, who was my ag teacher. You know, I, I think more of it is mental though. And uh, in my opinion, mental, you know, emotional damage or verbal, you know, abuse can be a lot harder on a person than physical abuse. Not that physical abuse is, you know, any better by any means, but, um, you know, that emotional toll that, you know, when someone's being bullied day after day after day after day, they can really wear on you, you know, for example. And uh, what do you think of bullying? What do I think of it? Yeah. Well, I think it's, uh, you know, it's something that constantly needs to be looked at. You know, it's not something where, hey, we don't have a bullying problem in this school because we fixed it. You know, there is no fixing as far as having it done with, you know what I mean? It's something that you always need to be aware of in every school to uh, give students avenues to go to when something happens to them as far as being bullied. And you always want to make sure you have someone in the building that's there for you. Being bullied, so was I, yeah. It's causing these babies to fly high, yeah. If you do not believe me, she was AJ when she had enough. He was age nine when he didn't feel love. She was age ten when she had gave up, yeah. He was eleven when he turned into dust, yeah. She was age twelve when she wanted help. She was thirteen, couldn't love herself. You don't believe me, search it yourself, yeah. These young babies are killing themselves.